Hello and welcome to Advanced Digital System Design Playlist. We will begin with the introduction of this course. Usually this course focuses on designing of digital systems from scratch. Also this course focuses on designing combinational and sequential building blocks. Using these building blocks later on we will design bigger digital circuits. So let's begin with uh, combinational and sequential circuits what these actually are combinational circuits are defined as the time independent circuits these are the time independent circuits which do not depend upon previous inputs they do not depend usually upon previous inputs to generate any output and on the other hand sequential circuits depends on clock cycles and on present as well as past inputs to generate any output as soon as inputs are changed in combinational circuits, the info information about the previous inputs is lost. That is, they have no memory. This means that the combinational circuits have no memory. As soon as the inputs are changed in the combinational circuit, the information about the previous input is lost. Whereas the sequential circuits have memory. Let's discuss few points about combinational circuits. Here the output depends only on the present input. In combinational circuits, output depends only on the present input. Speed is fast and it's easy to design. There is no feedback between input and output. Combinational circuits are time independent circuits. Here in combinational circuits, elementary building blocks are logic gates. Combinational circuits are used for arithmetic and as well as boolean operations they don't have the capability to, to store data and, and that is they do not have the memory no clock no memory element is present for example encoder and multiplexer are the examples of this combinational circuit this block shows the combinational circuits here it has n inputs z outputs Whereas on the other hand, sequential circuits, in sequential circuits, output depends upon present as well as past inputs. There exists a feedback between input and output. Time dependent, these sequential circuits are time dependent circuits. Here the elementary building blocks are the flip flops. Flip flop usually has a memory as everyone is aware of that. So flip-flops are examples of you know, sequential circuits. Sequential circuits are used for storing data or to retain stored data. Like in flip-flops, we store data. Sequential circuits are clock dependent and also they need triggering. We'll study about triggering uh, soon. Memory element is present in sequential circuits. For example, flip-flops, counters, extra are the examples of the sequential circuits. This block shows the diagram of the sequential circuits. Here it has the combinational circuit which has the external inputs and external outputs and there is a feedback path through memory element usually flip-flops. Sequential circuits are actually combinational circuits with feedback and memory. Now let's discuss the types of sequential circuits. We will here focus mainly on the sequential circuits depending on timing of their signals sequential circuits can be classified as we have usually two types of sequential circuits one is synchronous sequential circuit the other is asynchronous sequential circuit in synchronous sequential circuits signals can affect memory elements only at discrete intervals of time but in asynchronous, asynchronous sequential circuits change in input signal can affect memory element at any instant of time. So change in input signal can affect memory element at any instant of time while as in synchronous sequential circuit signals can affect memory elements only at a discrete intervals of time. Now we will distinguish between synchronous and asynchronous sequential circuit. In synchronous memory elements are clocked flip-flops. Here clock is present in asynchronous sequential circuit memory elements are either unclocked flip-flops or time delay elements in synchronous the change in input signal can affect the memory element 
upon the activation of clock signal. In asynchronous sequential circuits, change in input signals can affect the memory element at any instant of time. Here in synchronous sequential circuit, maximum operating speed of the clock depends on the time delays involved. Because of the absence of clock in asynchronous sequential circuit, circuits can operate more faster than synchronous sequential circuits. The synchronous sequential circuit is easier to design while as asynchronous is difficult to design. Now we usually come across a term called storage element. A storage element in digital circuit is that which can maintain a binary state indefinitely until directed by an input signal to switch state. Storage elements that operate with signal levels are referred as latches and they are said to be level sensitive. I will distinguish between flip flops and latches. Flip flops are storage elements that are controlled by clock transition. Latches are storage elements that operate with signal levels. Flip flops are usually edge sensitive devices. Latches are usually level sensitive devices. Flip flops helps in design of asynchronous sequential circuit and latches help in design of synchronous sequential circuits. Now let's move to the triggering of flip flops or latches. The state of latch or flip flop is switched by change in control input. This momentary change is called triggering and the transition it causes is said to trigger the flip flops. Usually we have two types of triggering, edge triggering and level triggering which are basically divided into two types each. Edge trigger triggering is divided into positive edge triggering and negative edge triggering and level triggering has positive level triggering and negative level triggering. Now let's discuss what level triggering is. Level triggering is enabled when clock pulse goes high or low. If the flop changes its state when positive clock pulse is applied, it is termed as positive triggered flip flop. And if the flip flop changes its state when clock pulse is negative, it is termed as negative triggered flip flop. It has some drawbacks. The flip flop changes its state more than once for the change in input as long as the clock is positive or negative. The second we have the edge triggering. A clock pulse usually goes to two signal transitions from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0. As we know clock pulse can go to two transition levels. Positive edge triggering. In positive edge triggering flip flop changes its state when the clock pulse is positive edged transition that is the transition from 0 to 1 when there is a transition from 0 to 1 then only flip flop changes its state that is called positive edge triggering negative edge triggering is uh, is when the flip flop changes its state when clock pulse is transition from 1 to 0 if the flip flop changes its state when clock pulse is transition from 1 to 0 then it's called the negative edge triggering that's all about this lecture. I hope you enjoyed the lecture. I'd like to thank you for watching. And please do like and subscribe the channel. Thanks. Subscribe now and press the bell icon. Never miss an update.